you know, you've seen nuisance fish or fish that aren't indigenous, invasive species. Well, the same can be said for plants. And as I'm out here right now looking down at this huge amount of vegetation that's not supposed to be here. And we're on Paintsville Lake today in Johnson County. We're gonna catch up with some fisheries biologists a little bit later to talk about this unwanted vegetation. But first, I've been watching what's going on out here. We're gonna try a little trolling for bass because that seems to be the only game in town today. What I saw out here was a few shad jumping over here and over there and a few little jumps and I figured it might be black bass so I put a little AC shiner on and started trolling. And these aren't great big fish but that's just fun. What is trolling? What's the concept of trolling? It's putting a bait out behind your boat and getting your boat up to the adequate speed to make that bait work. And if you can go through a pod of these fish and they are working and feeding and you can get the right size bait right in front of them, hopefully they'll hit it. You know, it might look funny out here. You see all these big boats passing us by and throwing wakes and here we are in a little old paddle boat. But you know what? I was watching them. I was catching just as many fish as they were. Best one so far. I knew I'd been seeing some decent ones in there. Now, it was pretty tiring, as you can imagine. I probably, I probably trolled for about eight miles, but it works. Trolling is very effective. Sometimes when all else fails, put you a bait out, you know that they might be targeting, and just work it behind the boat. Now, I finally found those biologists talking about that weed problem. We're gonna go catch them right here. Paul, we're down here on Paintsville Lake and uh, you're the nuisance species biologist. Tell us what that entails. Basically, I'm kind of the opposite of a lot of other biologists you hear about. I'm the guy that, that is here to get rid of the stuff that we don't want in Kentucky. And we got plenty of it. And we do, You got your work cut out for you. Yes, sir. Today on Paintsville Lake, as we look around, it's a tranquil scene. I don't see too much that looks out of place, but as I was fishing this morning, I looked down and it looked like some of those lakes in Michigan. There was just a massive quantity of aquatic vegetation. Some people call it moss. People call it the seaweed. They call it, I just heard it called seaweed just a little while ago from, from our buddies over there. What are we seeing in here that's not supposed to be here? Well, Paintsville Lake has a good variety of aquatic vegetation, but unfortunately there's a couple species here that do qualify for those nuisance species we were talking about. And these are non-native plant species that are forming those really dense beds of vegetation that you're seeing. Um, one of the biggest ones that you're seeing out here is hydrilla. We also have Eurasian milfoil as well as elodea, and, and these are three invasive plant species and why they're problematic is exactly what you saw, is that they have a tendency to form these really dense, thick beds of vegetation. People are gonna say, how did they get here? How do they, how do they find themselves in ponds and lakes all over the place? Well, aquatic vegetation's a little different than terrestrial vegetation. You know, you think of going to Walmart, buying your tomato plant, you're worried about, all right, I gotta make sure it's well watered and the roots are intact to get the plant and, and get it growing. Well, water vegetation just didn't like that. You can just take little fragments of it, and if it gets thrown into the right conditions, it's gonna grow. And, and our aquatic vegetation came here from a variety of sources. Anyway, from, from a boat, a recreational angler, someone coming with some fragments in their live well attached to the bottom of the boat. If it stayed moist until it made it to this lake, that's one possible avenue it got here. Another way is a lot of people use uh, aquatic plants in their water gardens, in their aquariums, and then when they're done with them, they, they kind of think, ah, oh, it won't be that big a deal. I'll just go dump it out at the lake and it'll live and so will my goldfish that I had there. And, and so that's another possible, possible avenue. You can go and see a lot of these species that we're talking about in your local aquarium store. And, and it can just be a real problem when it gets out into some of our native lakes and ponds. Good or bad for the fish? <laughs> that's been the question traditionally a lot of anglers ask, you know, and and the answer is, in general, aquatic vegetation does well for a fishery. The problem, and, and when it becomes an issue, is that when it gets 
in really high levels in these dense, dense mats that you're talking about, that's when it becomes an, an issue not only for our fisheries, but also for access for boaters and, and swimmers. And you're seeing these really dense mats out here. And vegetation is good for a fishery in general because it provides some cover for smaller fish. Well, what happens when you have these dense mats is it becomes harder for your bigger predatory fish that we like to fish with to find their forage species. What can you do? Um, that's a tough question. You've seen kind of out on this lake some of these dense patches and really when aquatic vegetation gets that thick, it's difficult to manage. Um, one of the few things we can do is we try to eliminate it near boat ramps so it's less likely that anglers and boaters carry it to another water body. Um, and in, in Paintsville Lake, you know, it's kind of a seasonal problem. Our hard winters here really help uh, knock it back from year to year. But the main thing we are encouraging people to do is pay attention to aquatic veg vegetation and keep from moving it. As boaters and anglers, you know, just pay attention as you pull your boat out at the ramp. Take an eye and look over your trailer, specifically areas like the lower unit of your motor. Check your live well. Maybe you dipped up a bass and you have a little sprinkle of veg in there. Drain that live well out when you're done. Look over your trailer on your runners to see if any is hanging off and remove it before you get down the road. Um, that's especially true if you're coming from another state or moving from one lake to another long distances. It's a good practice in that case. Just let your boat dry out for five days a week. Make sure it gets good and dry and that's going to kill all those aquatic veg and, and other hitchhikers that could ride on your boat and trailer. You know, as, as I was out here trolling around seeing these jumps, I was expecting I might catch a spot or a smallmouth, but it was all LMB, all largemouth. Our spotted bass, it used to be a nice fishery, has de decreased 50% and our smallmouth has decreased 50% in numbers. One more time, tell them what they need to do when they're pulling the boats out and watching for that weed. Watch for hydrilla, any, actually any plant, when you load your boat up, remove stuff at the ramp, and uh, it's a quick trip to Dewey Lake or uh, Yatesville Lake from Paintsville Lake. Uh, it'd be real easy to put that, start these problem plants in other lakes.